so I'm in New York City doing this intro because I filmed the actual DIY before I left town, but I've been in New York for about a week and um, wanted to make sure I got this video up. So this is basically this is a viral video that like a hundred people sent me of this dress, which looks like it's just a couple of slices and a piece of fabric that turns this thing into like this epic dress. I tried it a few times and it did not work. I was like, it doesn't work. I made a few tiny tweaks and I used a very specific fabric. I loved it so much I brought it on my trip with me. And for context, I bring a carry-on for eight days in New York. So every single thing that I pack, I have to love and I brought it. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. Totally no sew. Very, very simple, very easy, but the fabric is important. You want something super stretchy, really lightweight and kind of like boingy. You know what I mean? Like boingy. I feel like you know what I mean. So here's the video that everybody sent me. Now, it looks amazing. However, we have to keep in mind that this is clearly computer generated, which means that they have the ability to kind of tweak and finagle the details to make it look more flattering or like a better result than it might actually look when you're just cutting your fabric. But these are the slices. It's three separate slices. They look connected when they're like this, but they're not. Okay, like I said, I'm in New York and I was just editing this video and I realized I'm missing a very important clip. It's on my card at home in LA. Mm. So I wanna tell you how you're gonna figure out your measurements. Now, as you can see in the video, it looks like one slice going this way and one slice going this way, right? So one, two, three. That is what it is, but this is how you're gonna figure it out. First things first, you wanna figure out your neck hole. You could do a tiny little neck hole if you want, that's totally up to you. I knew that I wanted a wide neck hole so that I could create almost like a cowl neck. Not like a full droopy cowl neck, but just if I cut it wide and then I actually pulled it in onto my shoulder, it would create just a little bit of a droop. That would also let me throw it off one shoulder and have like an off the shoulder situation or pull both down. So when I measured it, I went from like the bone in my shoulder to the bone in my shoulder and that was 12 inches. So I knew that that one slice going directly across was gonna be 12. You have to leave something uncut or you're not gonna have a shoulder. So the way it looks in the video is that all the lines are connected. You can't have that. There has to be something in between the cuts. Think of it like an H, right? It looks like an H. In between this line and these lines, you have to keep something closed, uncut, or there's nothing for your shoulder. I decided two inches was a nice strap on the shoulder. That's the length that I wanted. So 12 inches this way, maintaining two inches on the side. Then what I did is I knew that I wanted this to come together here at the waist. I wanted like a deep V here and I wanted it to come together. So I measured from here up to my shoulder. That was also 12. The one most important thing to consider is that the measurement, the 12 plus the two, is the width of the front of your dress. So let's say you make a small little neck hole. You want like this kind of a neck hole instead. You need the shoulder, just like this is, to be at least, you know, whatever, uh, six inches wide on either side, or your dress is literally gonna be cut down here. The H that you're creating, the space in between the H, is the width going across your bust. You're gonna see in a second, it's all gonna make sense, I promise. All right, if you happen to have a cutting mat, a ruler, and a rotary blade, I'd recommend using those because it's gonna create really clean cuts. Here is my fabric. I bought about two yards of fabric and it's that super lightweight, slinky material. Really, you want something that stretch and that cuts clean. That's the most important. You're gonna find your center. So you wanna fold it in half one way, then fold it in half the other, and just put a pin. That is going to be dead center for our neck hole. This is a decision you're gonna make. If you notice the dress on the right is squared off on the bottom, that's how you would be cutting your neck hole. I decided to angle my neck hole so that it ended up almost being cut on the bias and would have like an asymmetric hemline. This is my 12 inch slice, that is my neck hole. Now, this part, I know I said 12 inches and it is, but it's 12 inches on either side of the neck hole, which really means it's a 24 inch slice because we don't stop, we go up and over the shoulder. That little piece right there where I'm grabbing with my fingers right now, that's the two inch piece that I maintained. Okay, let's try it on. I'm wearing just like a slip so that I can try it on in front of you. Here's our fabric with our holes. I'm just gonna... Wait a minute. Okay, I'm gonna try it in the mirror like this instead. The cowl neck is awesome. So I definitely like the decision of making it wider, especially because if I want, there's probably a lot of things I could do. So cowl neck is great. This was 12 inches on either side and because it cuts, it creates this drape. So let's say I had done six inches. Maybe the drape would be up here, but I actually don't think I would like that because I like the idea of now wrapping this and this and creating a belt because, <coughs> oh, excuse me, it creates such 
pretty draping. Like this reminds me of a Vivian Westwood like drapey situation. You could close this, sew that right there and right there and then belt it or do whatever. It's a little bit more maybe like easy breezy effortless without a belt. However, then it is like this and that's it. The benefit of not doing that is now there's actually kind of a lot of stuff you could do with these. They could get wrapped in the front. They could get one in the front and one in the back. You could probably even like tie it, belt it like you normally would. And now overlap. So I'm gonna take this part and put it over the back and I'm gonna take this part and put it over the front. This is gonna create really pretty draping on the side and now I've closed off the top a little bit. Same thing here. We'll pull this way and this way. And I'm actually wearing, this is a baseball belt, um, so it's elastic. So it feels really good. The front is leather, but the rest is like nice and soft because it's elastic. But look at how pretty that is. All of these details and the volume that you get right here when all of this is smooth is so cool. And if you're someone who needs a bra, you could wear like a cool bra or like a bandeau bra. There's a lot of different options that you can do when you give the cowl neck because you can kind of pull it like this to create this kind of a neckline. You could do it off one shoulder like so. You could pull it in even more and kind of create like that type of tank. By going wider, it also gives you more width here, which is gonna give you more coverage. So you just wanna make sure that this piece, the distance between your 12 inch and 12 inch slices is wide enough for your bust to give you coverage. And I feel like by cutting it kind of on the bias like I did, it actually gives you more ways of wearing it because the bottom is always asymmetric no matter what. So it allows you to wrap it different ways without feeling like the bottom is a giveaway that like it's wrong, you know what I mean? So it really gives, like it's so, it's pretty in the front and the back. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. It's perfect, it's perfect. This is such an easy DIY and you only need a couple of yards of fabric. So I would really recommend going for it, make a few of them. I am like addicted, I can't wait to go get some more fabric. If you guys like this video, I hope that you will subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment on it. All of that stuff just really helps the channel grow and reach new people and let YouTube know that this is like a good channel with good content. That is how you can communicate to YouTube. So if you did like it, I hope you'll do all of those things and uh, have a beautiful week. I will see you guys here next week. Um, I love you so much. It's so good.